What are the best publications that you can read on Substack today? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins. Welcome to the Become a Writer Today channel. So I've been a member of Substack for a few years and I've even set up my own Substack newsletters. I've interviewed some of the best Substack newsletter writers, including one of the co-founders of Substack. It's a great place to find great writing, but it's also a great place uh, to join if you want to see how writers are using Substack to connect with their readers. So in this video, I'm gonna feature eight different Substack publications across a variety of niches or niches or topics that are worth reading and subscribing to. Hope you enjoy the content in this video all about the best Substack newsletters. Now let's dive in. Do you find it difficult to get into a state of flow when you're writing? Flow basically describes when all sense of time and effort fades away. In other words, it describes when you're able to concentrate on whatever you're writing without worrying about what time it is or something else that you've got to do. It's a great way to make progress on your first drafts. If you need help getting into flow state, check out the flow state Substack newsletter. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Basically, every day they will send out a recommendation of music that will help you get into a state of flow. This music is usually free of lyrics. It can be electronic music, guitar music, classical music, jazz music, and any type of music that doesn't really have a lot of distractions. The recommendations will include uh, where you can find the music on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music, Amazon Music, Bandcamp, and Tidal. You can, of course, preview Flow State for free, and I've been a subscriber for a few years now, and I'm actually a paying subscriber, and the reason why I'm a paying subscriber is uh, you will get access to an exclusive mix every Tuesday that you can listen to on the uh, web app or which via your Substack mobile app or via your podcast app. And it basically comprises all of the recommendations mixed up. And you will get access to more music recommendations as well that will help you get into a state of creative flow. Basically, it's a great Substack newsletter because it's music orientated, firstly. And secondly, because the recommendations are designed to help people concentrate on their work. Definitely want to check out if you need help doing just that. The Novelist is an excellent Substack newsletter for writers and also for Substack readers who are interested in learning how creatives are using Substack to share their writing and also to talk about the writing process. It's founded by Substack newsletter writer and author L. Griffin. I actually interviewed L for the Become a Writer Today podcast. And on the podcast interview and also on the about page of Substack, she shared the reason why she set up her particular paid newsletter. Basically, she said that after she wrote her first novel, she spent an inordinate amount of time researching how to publish it. And she was shocked to discover that no one really reads books and that traditional publishing isn't working for authors anymore. Now, that may be a bold claim. So Elle went and researched uh, some statistics uh, about books and how many people read them. And she cited this report on the New York Times, which said that 98%, a whopping 98% of books the publishers released in 2020 sold fewer than 5,000 copies. And actually, if you're watching this and you're an independent author, and you sold more than a thousand copies of one of your books within the first year, congratulations, because that's something only a few authors can claim uh, to, to have done. Basically, Elle describes how this statistic was shocking, and she said to herself, oh, I'm spending so much time writing a book, how could I you know, make sure people actually read it and enjoy it? And that prompted her to set up a paid Substack newsletter, because readers today, while some are reading books, a lot more are spending time engaging with online content, whether it's articles on Medium, or on Substack publications. And in this particular edition, she goes into more detail on some of those statistics. So it's definitely a Substack to follow if you're interested in self-publishing trends. And if also if you're interested in seeing how an author like Elle is using Substack to distribute uh, her fiction as serialized editions on Substack. And also she publishes thought pieces as well, like this one here, how she's so over dead French writers. And she also has an engaged community, which is another key to a successful Substack publication. So in this one here, she's uh, polling the subscribers about what she'd like or what they'd like her to write next. Uh, and she also obviously receives, receives paid support from some paying subscribers too for this Substack publication. And um, she also talks about some creative experiments she's doing, like writing rap for TikTok uh, and some books that she's reading and asks readers to get engaged. You can see here that she has 83 comments on this particular post. So she's kind of using this as a type of personal blog and also as a place to publish her essays and to distribute her fiction. So definitely a Substack publication to follow if you're an independent author or if you're interested in following uh, the self-publishing space. Bankless is a pretty big publication on Substack. It's all about cryptocurrency and non-fungible tokens or NFTs. Even if you're not interested in cryptocurrency or NFTs, it's still a good publication to follow if you want to see how people are building brands on Substack. 
So the Bankless publication uh, states quite clearly what it's about and who it's for. It's focused on Ethereum, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, open finance and decentralized finance. So they've covered a few different key topics in this area. Further down on the about page, they've clearly stated what free and paying subscribers will get. So you're going to get five newsletters a week, which is quite a lot. Uh, on Mondays, you get a market rundown. Tuesdays, you get new tactics. Wednesdays, you get a piece by a Bankless team member. Uh, Thursdays, you get a thought piece about strategy. And Fridays, it's more of a community discussion for collaboration. Now, you may be looking at this going, wow, do I have to publish my Substack newsletter five days a week? Well, no, not necessarily, because if you look at the people section of Bankless, although it's founded by Ryan Sean Adams and David Hoffman, there are over a dozen different people who are helping write, research, and produce the content and build a community on Bankless. And it's also worth pointing out that the uh, niches that or niches that Bankless is covering are actually quite broad. So if you're just one lone writer setting up a Substack publication, you could just potentially pick one niche or niche and focus on that and publish one to two newsletters a week uh, instead. Now there is a free and paid version of Bankless. I'm actually a paying subscriber. Basically you get access to some premium content like a podcast feed that's free of ads. And you also get access to a Discord community uh, where you can interact with other subscribers and members of the, the Bankless publication. Definitely a publication to follow if you want to see how people are building a brand on Substack. And I was also interested to see that they're doing this on Substack and not WordPress. So they're not relying on search engine optimization. Uh, to get traffic to their publication, they're purely uh, relying on the newsletter model. Weekly Dish is a Substack publication by the well-known British-American commentator, writer, and critic Andrew Sullivan. He's well-known in Ireland too uh, for his writings in national newspapers about culture and the intersection between British and American politics. It's a good publication to follow if you're interested in seeing how a journalist is using Substack to connect directly with their readers. If you subscribe to this particular Substack publication, you can expect a newsletter every day uh, about whatever's happening in the news. In this case, it's about the war uh, in Ukraine. If you go to the about section, you can see that it costs $5 per month or $50 per year to get the paying version. And then you get access to audio versions of the newsletters. And you can also uh, take part in discussions on the community about Andrew's writing. Now, this is indicative of how you could potentially find success as a writer on Substack uh, with this model without relying on ads or sponsored content. Let's say you had a thousand people paying you five dollars a month that, that would turn out to a nice income that you could earn as a full-time writer now however it is worth remembering that andrew sullivan was well known before he set up this substack publication and he had a lot of readers that he was able to bring to substack so if you are going to set up a substack publication it would be better to build an audience first before you turn on paid subscriptions um, another key takeaway for me from studying this Substack publication is that he clearly describes what his formula is. So he has his main column, one or two shorter posts, a dissent section where he can, people can air disagreements with his column. Uh, and then he also has a reader forum uh, where people can share stories and a podcast as well. And he also publishes transcripts. And he provides examples of what you can get if you subscribe to the Weekly Dish. So it's a good publication to follow if you want to see how journalists are using this to share stories directly with the readers rather than relying on traditional media gatekeepers. The Audacity is a popular Substack publication by the author and former blogger Roxanne Gay. On the about page, she describes how she was thinking a lot about blogs prior to setting up this publication and that she used to write an obscure blog that few people read and there she would just share her thoughts with a few different people. However, she decided to move to a different way of connecting with readers, which prompted her to set up the Audacity. Basically, on the Audacity, she uses this space to feature the work of other writers. And every two weeks, she'll publish an essay from an, emer from an emerging writer that you probably haven't heard of, interview them about their work, and ask them about who they are and who they hope to become. She also hosts a book club on the Audacity, where, featuring books by underrepresented American writers, and talks about them. Uh, on the About page, you can see the, a preview of what full access to, to the newsletter will give you. Uh, and you can also see examples of books that are featured in the book club on the Audacity. And you can also learn more about Roxanne Gay's work as well. So she links off to her author website where you can uh, check out some of the books that she's written. And you can also learn more about who she is and where she writes. So she's obviously, she's quite an accomplished uh, American author who is now using her platform to give other writers uh, a place where they can share their work. So definitely a good Substack publication to follow if you're looking for something to read or if you're looking to see how uh, well-known authors are using Substack uh, to engage with their community. Substack is rapidly becoming known as a good place for independent journalism. 
But it's also a place where you'll find a lot of journalism by media organisations with a conservative bias or angle. One example is The Dispatch, which covers conservative news stories or stories that are orientated around conservative news principles. Now, I was interested in this particular Substack publication, not necessarily because I'm a conservative, but because it's good to see how a media organisation is building a presence on Substack. And I say media organisation because when you go to the About page, you can read all about this particular digital media company and how they focus on politics, policy uh, and culture. Uh, and if you go to the uh, people section, obviously there are dozens and dozens of journalists uh, writing for the dispatch. Uh, and there are multiple different newsletters that you can sub subscribe to as part of the dispatch, depending on what you're interested in, whether that's British politics or American politics uh, or world affairs. It's worth looking at this particular Substack publication uh, to see what way potentially media could be going if we're moving away from traditional media models uh, online. Substack has signed deals with several well-known writers and authors to convince them to use their platform to connect with readers. One of the most high-profile signs is Salman Rushdie, who signed an undisclosed deal uh, with Substack uh, to publish his writing and fiction on the platform. His publication is called Sea of Stories, and you can subscribe for free to get some of Salman's writing. On the About page, he describes what the angle for Sea of Stories is. Basically, human beings are the only creatures on the earth who are able to tell stories according to Salman. And we use stories to understand the kind of creatures we are. They're the very heart of human nature. So he's going to talk about stories on Substack that have made a big impact on him. Stories that he's read in books then, uh, or on the news, seen in the movies, TV, theatre or heard from his parents and friends. And he's also going to put up his original stories too. A lot of this will be free. However, if you subscribe or pay for his particular Substack, you'll also get access to an unpublished full-length fiction every week that he will be publishing on this publication. So as a paying subscriber, you'll be able to read it and you'll also be able to read his uh, made-up stories. And he will also ask his community questions. So it could be a good way of interacting with Salman or asking him about his writing. Um, like many good Substack publications, it's not just text. There are audio versions that paying subscribers can get to of these essays and of his fiction. Definitely an interesting pu Substack publication to follow if you want to see how a big name literary author is using the newsletter model to connect with their readers. Glenn Greenwald is a well-known American journalist. He's a former constitutional lawyer and the author of not one but four New York Times best-selling books all about politics and the law. He covers the US surveillance state, independent journalism and the story of whistleblowers like Edward Snowden and so on. So he's obviously written for a lot of prestigious uh, traditional media organisations. But he's also gone ahead and set up a paid Substack publication uh, where he features his journalism too. On the Glenn Greenwald Substack, uh, you can expect newsletters almost every day about uh, topics related to independent journalism and Glenn Greenwald's areas of interest and also what his readers want to learn from. It's a huge community, as you can see here. You know, some of his stories here have uh, hundreds, if not thousands, uh, of comments. And also, it's worth, it's worth subscribing if you want to get audio versions of Glenn's work too. So you can listen to these on the Substack player or you can listen to them on your podcast app. And there's a couple of different ways that Glenn has organized his uh, stories. So you can also get uh, some video uh, from Glenn with transcripts too. Definitely a Substack publication to follow if you want to see how a big name journalist is using this particular uh, platform to distribute their content and stories to their readers and to an audience. Of course, Substack doesn't just have newsletters about the news and current affairs. Parent Data is a good Substack publication to follow if you want to access the latest data and information related to pregnancy, parenting, and sometimes COVID-19 and how it intersects with those topics. And the author, uh, Emily Oster and Yem, provide uh, numbers and decision-making tools, spreadsheets and statistics and so on about all of these topics that parents can use. So it's a fairly regularly updated Substack publication. It's one of the most popular ones that's out there today. You can expect newsletters uh, almost every day about parenting, um, vaccines, and so on. It's an interesting Substack publication to follow, I suppose, if you're a parent, firstly. And secondly, if you're ac looking for access to scientific information uh, on any of these topics. As you may have guessed, that's only a sample of the best Substack publications that you can read today. The best way to find Substack publications is to look, one, look for ones that are relevant to your area of interest. You can do that using the Substack web app or using the mobile app. Under the Featured section, Substack will feature new and upcoming publications. 
and it is worth remembering that new Substack publications are being launched all the time. And actually, since I first wrote an article about this exact same topic, which I'll link to in the notes below this video, I've noticed that some Substack publications have actually stopped publishing because writers have moved to other platforms like WordPress or Ghost, or they've you know gotten tired with the newsletter model. So what the best Substack publications today could be different to the best ones uh, tomorrow. Another good way to find interesting publications is to uh, use the recommended section uh, in your inbox. And that will recommend, much like any feed on social media, publications that you can follow based on what you've already subscribed to. And you can, of course, manage your free and paid subscriptions uh, within the Substack publication as well. So you can see here, Bankless is coming up on my feed, as well as a couple of other publications uh, that I like to read. Basically, Substack is a great place to find uh, interesting writing, to read independent journalism. And it's also a great place uh, to become a member of if you want to see how writers and newsletter owners are using this particular platform distribution tool to connect with their readers. But of course, you don't just need to use Substack to find great writing. It's simply just one place to do it. So hope you enjoyed the content in this video all about the best Substack newsletters. Remember, in the notes below this video, I'll link to a companion always up-to-date article that features some additional publications that I've left out. And if you've got feedback or questions, let me know in the comments section below. 